anybody who has been charged of DUI, that person could be inadmissible to Canada for a period of 10 years. This is Sajad Malik. I'm a business and immigration lawyer, a barrister and solicitor in Ontario, Canada. Today's topic is criminal inadmissibility. A person who was convicted of an offense, whether it was a minor criminality or a major criminality, and that person has not been deemed rehabilitated to enter Canada, try to enter Canada, and then when the officers look at his criminality record, they uh, return him to his home country. This is possible that a person has met certain conditions and after the lapse of certain period of time, after the, he has served a sentence, this person may be allowed to enter Canada, but there are certain processes involved in that. Now, the criminality could be of two kinds. It could be a minor criminality or a major criminality. Minor criminality means those offenses which are codified in the particular criminal code of that country as minor offenses those offenses are also considered minor uh, crimes in Canada. Now, if that person has been convicted of a minor offense, for example, shoplifting in his, own, is in his home country, uh, was convicted of that offense, then he was imposed a fine or a probation or something, and then he has spent all the parts of that sentence in his home country, there is a possibility that that person might have got rehabilitated after five years uh, since uh, the disposition of that uh, sentence or that offense. Uh, there are other uh, situations in which the crimes are more severe, including aggravated assaults and sexual offenses or uh, even DUI in Canadian context. Those people could be inadmissible to Canada for a period of 10 years. Now, is there any recourse if that person is, uh, has committed an offense that has been charged and the period has not passed? Is there any recourse that in certain special circumstances, even before he has been rehabilitated, that person could come to Canada? Yes, if there's a compelling reason for that person to come to Canada, despite having not lapsed the period which was required for rehabilitation, that temporary resident permit may be uh, may be applied for and may be approved in certain con uh, conditions. Now coming back to the minor criminality and the major cr criminality, what is the process for those uh, to overcome come those criminalities? Uh, they, there's a formal application process which is highly discretionary in those, uh, uh, in those circumstances for minor criminality. That person must have spent five years crime-free after the la last offense and after uh, serving the sentence in last offense and then through a special application that person might be rehabilitated and could come to Canada to pursue uh, his purpose and it may include uh, temporary visit, study permit, business visa or even uh, temporary or even permanent residence. If a person has not spent that period then he won't be rehabilitated and he won't be able to come and he'll have to resort to the temporary resident permit situation a permit program which is a highly discretionary visa and they are generally not allowed unless there's a compelling reason for that person to come to canada if major criminality was involved and there was a conviction of aggravated assault or sexual offenses or uh, or an offense which is, was indictable and there was a prison time involved or the maximum sentence in uh, that offense, the offense which could have been uh, awarded to him was 10 years imprisonment, then that person may not be rehabilitated without uh, before the lapse of 10 years uh, and then the, his rehabilitation uh, would occur after the, uh, the 10 years process. Now these are very, very formal and highly um, uh, organized applications. They are discretionary, no doubt about it. You cannot claim criminal rehabilitation or TRPs out of right. But if you start the process, then you have to be prepared not only to produce all the evidence related to your crime in your home country, including the charges, the section of law under which you were charged, uh, all the court proceedings, the documents, the dockets related to your court proceedings. Then uh, you have to narrate the circumstances in which this crime occurred and then you remain crime free. You didn't have any contact with uh, the law enforcement since then and you showed that you have changed yourselves, you have remorse and you repent over those circumstances and then you also have to produce reference letters from your closer friends who were aware of those uh, criminal charges and who now could vouch that you are, uh, a, you are a totally changed person and the Canadian government could trust you by bringing you in that you won't create any uh, law enforcement or 
uh, criminal uh, scenario in Canada. You also have to secure various police certificates from all the countries where you have lived for a certain period of time and for all the countries you have uh, been convicted of or even in the case of United States, you need not only the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, FBI's clearances, but you also need clearances from all the states where, where you have lived. And then after this formal process, and it is highly recommended that you involve a lawyer who knows about the criminal side of it and, and uh, immigration side of it to help you in these applications. Now criminal inadmissibility, one interesting fact which I would like to share with you is that Canada takes DUI very seriously. So. Prior to the end of 2019, DUI was a minor offense, which means that somebody who had been convicted of DUI, he had completing all the sentences, uh, sentencing elements and those, and had spent five years, could apply for rehabilitation application. But now in the Canadian Criminal Code, DUI is a serious offense. Now, anybody who has been charged of DUI outside of, outside of Canada, even in a country where it is not an offense, it says it's a traffic violation or it's a demonor, that person could still be inadmissible to Canada for a period of 10 years. Now, Canada shares very close information with the US and most of the times the criminal offenses and other information relating to a US citizen are available in the Canadian database. So if you're trying the, taking the chance of coming to the land border and you have something to uh, to doubt about your cr criminal uh, criminal inadmissibility then you must uh, not try or attempt to come to Canada before you have consulted a lawyer and then the lawyer would evaluate your situation so in all countries where there are DUI convictions involved there is a highly li high likelihood that if that person has not spent or completed his sentences in in sentence in all in that jurisdiction that that person would remain inadmissible to Canada for a period of up to 10 years or for a period of 10 years or more. Sometimes it has been noted that the people who are criminally inadmissible due to some reason they apply for permanent residence in Canada or they are a dependent or they are principal applicants of permanent residence applications in permanent residence applications. Now these people won't get permanent residence unless they deal with the criminal inadmissibility matter. Whatever your merit is, even if you have a CRS score of 550, even if you are investing $10 million in a Canadian business, if you have criminal matters, criminal inadmissibility issues, despite having met all elements of a specific program under the Immigration Refugee Protection Act or regulations, you would still be inadmissible. In certain circumstances, if you are a sponsored person by a Canadian spouse, there are some avenues through which you could request the government to waive your inadmissibility or to condone it, but it would still be highly discretionary. So if you have a reason to believe that in past you had any criminal contact, criminal history, there is a reason that you feel you have uh, some, you may have uh, inadmissibility or you may be inadmissible to Canada, I would encourage you to contact a Canadian immigration lawyer who understands the Canadian criminal code as well and seek his advice on this. If you wish us to help you in this, please contact my office. My contact details are displayed at the end of this video and we would be very happy to help you in this matter. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day ahead.